people. So we have been working through the church I see. And today we want to focus in on the church I see worships. And it's a church that makes a sound that can be heard echoing around the planet. A sound of worship and praise really from our lips to God's ears. Songs that bring refreshing hope, encouragement, freedom, and overwhelming joy. How many of you know that music, it can actually take you to a place? It can take you to a good place. Sometimes it takes you to a bad place. I, I, you know, I remember when I was probably around 13 or 14, my family was going through a tough season, and I had this music tape that I played every night. It was a tape, a cassette tape. And for you younger ones, I know you don't know what that is, but <laughs> it's kind of like iTunes version 1.0. <laughs> way back in the day. Okay, negative five. <laughs> but around the third or fourth song on the tape was a song called I Stand in Awe of You. And, and whoever was singing it, I remember it would come on and I would often just get out of my bed and I would raise my hands up and just stand in awe of the creator as he ministered to me about who he was and how much he loved me and his holiness. And it really shaped me in that season of my life, and it carried me through a time. So whenever I hear that song, I go back to that time in my life, and I remember God's faithfulness to me. Yes. See, music, it moves because it, it, it affects our emotional realm. We get emotionally connected to songs. And I mean, how many of you have had a song carry you? And some of you don't even know it. But that's okay. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mary now. Good morning. So as Pastor Urge was saying, music is pretty amazing. And it has so much power to connect us with each other and with God emotionally. And we connect to certain songs, and certain songs can really draw out emotion in us, or they amplify that emotion that we're currently feeling. And music can... Uh, take us back to a place in time where it creates that nostalgia and that certain feeling that we had and bring us back to that place when we first heard it or what was going on. And this morning, we want to try to have some fun with you guys with music. And so can we want to see, we're going to play a song for you and see if you guys can tell us what song that is. Star Trek? Star Trek. <laughs> How many of you knew what song that was? And music, even like a lot of the young people know, it transitioned, it goes to the, through the generations. But we want to try to have some fun with you this morning and we wanted to have like a bit of a contest. Boys versus the girls. So we wanted to, does anybody want to volunteer to come play Name That Tune? We need three volunteers of girls and three volunteers of boys. I need some men that we, know so their music. So we need 18 on, to, you know, 30, then 30 to 45. Come on up. We need three volunteers, men, three volunteers, women. You it's going to be fun, you okay, guys. This is not scary. Anybody want to be on my team? I got one. I need two more guys. Come on up. One more volunteer. Two more guys. It's okay, guys. We don't bite. Woman. It'll be okay. Okay, there's another and another. We're good. We want to have fun this morning, I have guys. three. Yeah, come on up. One more. Is that Carlos? I need one more woman volunteer. Oh, my gosh. I'm like pulling teeth and here. It's on. just to name this songs, This is perfect. People. I got the Only perfect songs. one. How you doing? Good. Don't break my hand. You'll know them. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, it's guys, they, they really, they took us to school for a service. The men pulled ahead, and then the women stormed back and won by the tiebreaker at the end. So, we're not yeah. going to let that happen. This time, right? <laughs> Do you want the guys on your side over there? No, it's okay. <laughs> Come on over here, though. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, put your hands behind your back. And when the music plays, as soon as you recognize the song and you can maybe name the band and the name of the song, you hit the... That was easy. <laughs> and you will have an opportunity to win one point for our team. Come closer. How many say I can handle this? Yeah. Okay. It's a contest. So, team effort. So it's, yeah, it's men versus women. Team no effort. helping from the audience, okay? You guys can secretly all whisper to yourselves, but not real loud. 
How many say we're ready for this? You know, well, they're ready you, know for this. you know, as we got them all here, when I first heard that Star Wars theme, I was about uh, seven years old, and I got to go watch that at the theater for my birthday. <laughs> I remember. All right, we're going to take you through the decades, and I want to see how many of these you remember. Let's start with song number one. And? Oh, husband and wife. So what do we... So that goes gets... to the women. Oh. That totally goes to the women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, say the name of the song. Okay, we got this now, okay? Is everyone, is everyone good? Okay, yeah, one nothing women. Go ahead. Song number two. And? It's, um, what's her name? You know the title of the song? Love, love, love. That's not it. Anybody on your team, you know it? Alex? Diane. 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 Play a little bit more. Play a little bit more of the song. You gotta try. Okay, you guys tell us. How about the audio? Oh, you want to? She's she's kind of with the Supremes, but it's you can't hurry love. <laughs> so still one nothing women. Okay, this one's a little easier. Number three. There we go. One one. All right, let's go to the 70s. Any 70s children besides me? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Number four. That's right. That's right. Good. You got it. What is that now? Two to one? For the okay. ladies. Now, now I want to see the actions for this one. Number five. Not Saturday night, but it is the Bee Gees. <laughs> Staying alive. Staying alive. That's right. Good job. All right. This is what happened last service, except last service, the men pulled ahead like this, and then the women stormed back. So I'm thinking the men are going to storm back now. No, it's, it's three to one. Number six. Yes, it is. And we're in the 80s now, so let's try number nine. No guesses, audience. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Well, you uh -huh. should be up Take here. on me. Take on me. Okay, let's try number twelve. Yes. What is love? And number 13. From this moment. Who got it first? No, Celine Dion. 
I know what it's Shania Twain. Okay. Okay, so how are we doing? They What's the it. score? Three points? Three, right? Three, three? All right. Okay, this is Pastor Rick's song. This one's dedicated to Pastor Rick, number 16. Yes, it is. And number 17 is going to be fun. This is something new, the Casper Slide Part 2, featuring the Platinum Band. Electric Slide. That's one of the names for it, I suppose. <laughs> There's a more formal one. Do you know the formal name? Cha-Cha Slide. <laughs> The women get it on a technicality. That's two services in a row. Good job, guys. Thank you all. Thank you guys for volunteering. That was awesome. You guys were great. Thank you. Now, I know that seems like it's a lot of fun, but how many of you recognize some of those songs? How to remember what you were doing the first time you heard those songs? <laughs> we don't always want to. Like I said, music, we emotionally connect with it, and, and then it takes us somewhere. If I say to Garmo and Key, who remembers that? One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, if I say what a mana burger is, who talked about that in his music? Mana burgers. Don't you remember the, the Israelites had to eat manna in the wilderness for 40 years and then they made burgers, manna burgers? Who made manna burgers? Keith Green, Keith Green yes. Oh, I, I, I didn't anticipate too many people would remember that. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is talking. He says, get out of here, Satan. The scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And, and I want to talk to you just for a brief moment. Worship really allows us, because of the way that Jesus made, to enter into the presence of God. And if I can reiterate, the presence of God does not come down. We walk up into the presence of God. His throne room is his throne room. We can go there because of what Jesus did for us at the cross. And because of his death and resurrection, he made a way for us to be in relationship with the Creator. And what I want to communicate to you is worship is not just something we do on a Sunday morning when the instruments come on the stage and they sing songs. Worship is a lifestyle that we live every day. Yeah. We worship the King. We worship Jesus. We worship Him by the way that we live and when we obey His commands and His teachings. We worship Him when we lift up holy hands. We worship Him in our giving. We worship Him by loving one another. I think it's really important that we have this core understanding that as Christians, we're to live a life of worship. And the one that receives our worship is the one that is worthy to receive our worship. That's the king. Amen. And that should motivate everything that we do in life. So today, we have a special guest speaker. So I'd like to call Bryn up to talk to us for a few minutes. This is Bryn Coghill. Have fun, Bryn. Thank you. I Hello, enjoyed hearing everybody. what she had to say at first. I'm enjoying it again at second. Hello. Is everyone having fun? Yeah, I'm having a good time, too. Um, I love those songs. Love the whole walking through the generations thing. Like, you start in, like, the 60s and 70s, 80s, and, like, I wasn't even alive for 90% of those songs, <laughs> and I still know them, and I love how this crosses over to worship, too. Like, I could be growing up in the church singing Amazing Grace with people who were singing Amazing Grace 30 years before I was even born. So I love that. The power of worship is such an amazing thing. Um, so looking at present-day music, outside of the church, a lot of times it can fill you up with a lot of negativity and a lot of things that aren't godly and aren't good. But I love the power of worship and how it counters that to 
uplift you and so that you could take worship, whether it's musical or not, and come before God and just be filled up with the Spirit. And again, this is a common thing that goes across the generations, how worshipers can connect with each other during praise and also connect with God. So Pastor Mary and I were talking the other night about how we wish we could have like a Christian song that the whole world can sing, that like everybody can relate to and everyone knows. And we couldn't really think of one. And then later I was thinking and I was like, you know, like it's not really a worship song, but everywhere I go, people know this like Christian song, like atheists, Christians, old, young, like everybody knows it. Do you guys know what it is? Amazing Grace is a good guess, but if you go out into the world and you say amazing, like you start singing Amazing Grace, people are going to look at you like, <laughs> so it's not Amazing Grace, although a lot of Christians know that one. Does anyone else have any guesses? Close. I'll give you a hint. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. If you like to talk to tomatoes. Everybody knows Veggie Tales. Everybody loves Veggie Tales. You go out and you say something, and everyone's like, oh, I love Veggie Tales. And you're like, really? Wow, okay. <laughs> so it's out there. So we have something. We've got a little foothold. That's good. <laughs> um, but in all serious, in all seriousness, can you imagine if we had like a worship song that you could walk out into the world and everyone would be like, yes, I love that. I know that song, whether, you know, they're Christian or not, no matter their circumstance. Wouldn't that be amazing? What an atmosphere of salvation that would create when we could just all worship together. So I was looking at the passage, John 4, and this is when... Jesus goes to the well, and he meets the Samaritan woman, the one with uh, the, all the husbands. And they're talking about um, worshiping, and the Samaritan woman is like, oh, we worship here on the mountain. The Jews worship in the temple. And John 4, 22, 23 says, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. And I love this next part here. Yet the time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. You see, in this situation with the Samaritan woman worshiping outside of the city at the mountain and the Jews worshiping in the city, Jesus was talking about the true worship, the bridge between generations and cultural boundaries and all circumstances, that bridge of worship that brings us all together. Because in this time in the Bible and in this time now, it doesn't matter who you are. What matters is the worship you give. What matters is the song that you sing. The true worship it's not linked to experience. It's not linked to whether you can get up here with a guitar. It's not linked to whether you've been worshiping for 60, 70 years. It's all linked to where your heart's at and the lifestyle of worship you live. And I don't know about all of you guys, but I want to be the true worshiper that God is calling. And I want all of us to be the true worshipers together, to have this unity over all of us and this big song that can cover the whole world that just screams Jesus. And I want to use our talents to overcome the differences and embrace the actual worship instead. So we've got this true worship building up that we can go out into the world and instill that in people. And that's what I want from all of us. Amen. Thanks, Bryn. Hey, you have to come up here and talk now. I do? Yeah. You're on. It's all you. So I'm going to go sit down for a second. I'll come back in a minute. Are you really going to go sit down? I'm really going to go sit down. Okay. 
Anyway, I believe that what my wife's about to share with you, you're really going to enjoy. So, um, there's so much. Wor worship for me really hits me at a real personal level, but there's, there's just so much, so much um, about worship, about the power of worship and what it activates and what it does in the life of a believer. But I was really seeking the Lord about a certain truth and a revelation that's really, um, I don't want to say trendy is not the word, huh, maybe trendy is, but it's at the forefront a lot right now that we've been talking about in the culture. And um, one of those things, the thing that I really felt that the Holy Spirit really wanted me to touch on and bring some truth to is that worship and praise and thanksgiving is essential to your mental health. Worship, praise, and thanksgiving is essential. It's key to your mental health. And I don't think we as Christians really understand sometimes that we have that power available to us. And one of the things that I really want to bring to light, which I really feel like God was really showing me is that worship, when we worship, it's not about um, us. Pastor RJ was saying that when we are worshiping, when we are coming in to the throne room of God, it's not him coming down to us. The Lord is lifting us up to him. So, and the pathway for us to get there was through the blood of Jesus at the cross. And we have to understand that that place is the place where Jesus says, I'm going to reference the scripture for you so you have it. Ephesians 2, 6. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places because we are united with Christ Jesus. And that place that we're united with him is the cross. So our perspective is everything. It's everything. So when we go to the cross, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to go where you are. I'm bringing you to where I am. So your perspective is seated in heavenly places with him. So he's trying to show you where you're at when you're seated with him. But we also have to understand that our worship means that we are worshiping a someone. It's a who. We worship God for who he is. And that he alone deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. I said it, I, I said it last week that the church really has lost that understanding, that knowing that who is it that you say that you serve? Who is the God that you serve? Who is he? Because I know my Bible says, I said it last week, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Almighty. The angels cry for all eternity. Who was and is and is to come. Holy. Do we understand who God is? And when we understand who God is and we're approaching the throne and we're worshiping him for who he is, that sets us in a place of the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of? And that wisdom is the ability to take the knowledge that you have and be able to use it in a way that's beneficial. It can be said that God gives you the wisdom, the soundness of mind when you are posturing yourself in the fear of the Lord. And then out of that, because you are aware and you are in awe of what, who God is, that puts you in a place of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you will do. And you're praising him and you're entering his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Now, this is something that we need to recognize and understand that 
Well, there's so many verses, so many scriptures. Philippians 4, 8 says, Dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And the word of God also tells us to put on the garment of praise for, for the spirit of heaviness. This is choices. These are choices that we actually have to make in our daily lives to take hold of. The spirit of God says to lead every thought captive into what? The obedience of Christ. Lead it there. You have to take it there into the obedience of Christ. We need to be making choices and it's an active participation that we have when we are choosing to praise the Lord and worship him for who he is. And the other thing I want to bring out that's really, really important to your mental health, and it's a very spiritual thing, that we have to understand the word of God doesn't talk lightly about guarding your heart. It talks very strongly about needing to guard our heart, the ears, the eyes, the gateways to our soul. It's very important that we understand that because especially when we're going through trauma and heartache and hurt and grief and, and real, we're in the struggle, we're in the fight. You're vulnerable. You're very vulnerable. And the enemy knows it. And the enemy wants you to blame who? So as a Christian, you have to know and understand that in that same place, you are vulnerable, that those are the times that you battle, that you war, that you go to the throne of God and you beg him for truth, for him to pour into you revelation, for him to pour into you his love and his goodness. And he is faithful to do just that. And in that place of vulnerability where you've battled, where you've waged war for that truth, for that revelation, nobody will take it from you. And nobody can take it from you because in that ground, you've rooted and grounded in that place a healthy thought pattern a healthy mindset, a healthy truth about the character of God and his goodness. But the opposite is also true. In that place of vulnerability, in that place where you're weakened, you choose either to fill it up with the word of God and his truth, or you fill it up and you give way to the enemy to let him tell you lies to let him speak discouragement, to let him speak things that are not true. And that leads to toxic thought and toxic thinking. And it will only lead you down a pathway where it creates mindsets that take hold. Strongholds that are rooted and grounded deep in your spirit that will affect you the rest of your life. And the battle and the struggle to uproot them, it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. Very difficult because they've been sown in a vulnerable time in your life and a belief system inrooted inside of you. It's very important that we understand that we are active participants with praise and worship and adoration to God. I want to share with you a time in my life where this, it was very pivotal for me. And in this time in my life, where I was very, very vulnerable, very wounded, very broken, very bruised. I learned and God poured into me who he is and his goodness. And he taught me about his character. 14, almost 14 years ago in January, my baby brother, Andrew, passed away very suddenly. And it was a loss that was very devastating for our family. I remember the moment that our day, Pastor RJ had to come and tell me because he had taken the phone call from my father. That Andrew died and my father had found him. And in that moment, I dropped to my knees, crying out to God going, Lord, did he make it to heaven? Asking RJ, did he go to heaven, RJ? Do you know? And that torment within me 
not knowing. And in the days to come, God is so good. He knows. He knows. Do you know that the Lord, where does it say? In verse Psalm 32, 7. The Lord gives you songs of deliverance. The Lord gives you songs of victory. There are songs that touch our spirit in certain seasons of our life that the Lord is giving you on purpose to wage war. A song, a prayer of deliverance for you. A prayer of victory for you. And in the moments in the days ahead, a friend of mine, God works in so many ways, had given me, we were preparing for Andrew's funeral, had given me a CD with some songs that he prepared on it for him. And he really felt like he had prayed and he got a word from God about the music. And he gave me that CD. And as I listened to it, I wept and wept and wept. And in the days and months to come, when physically it hurt so hard, it hurt me physically to breathe. The strength to get out of bed. God, I need your help. I am vulnerable, Lord. I need you to speak truth in my life right now. I need you to help me. I have so many questions. Why? Why? This song was my anchor. It was my hope. It was my prayer. And God brought me through incredible amount of emotions just listening to this song over oh at least thousand a thousand times where now before when I heard that song I would weep and mourn and grieve and cry and cry and my prayers were only tears because I had no language I had no language I had no way to pray and I begged God give me a song to pray. Give me something to pray. Because I don't have it right now. And this song was my prayer. It was my anchor. Do you know that music, worship, that's anointed by God for you. For you. Because we're all facing a battle or a struggle that's unique to you. And if you allow God, he will give you a song of deliverance for you. A song of victory for you that you hold on to and it's your prayer. And you take it and you war with it. You do battle with that song. If Pastor Jacob and the worship team could come. That song, I'm sure all of you know, it's I Can Only Imagine. And for some people, it's just a, it's, it's a lovely song. It's a wonderful song. But for me, and I'm sure for so many others, because it was, at the time it was released, a song that God breathed through to bring hope, encouragement, and an anchor for them in a time where they were struggling, where they had no words, and they didn't know how to pray. So would you stand this morning and worship with us today and as you're listening to them would you allow the Holy Spirit to take you to a place where this song can give you hope this song can give language to the prayers that you just don't know what to say anymore if you're facing something that is just so big and so beyond you and you just don't know how to see the light and the way out that God, he is big enough. And this is not your home. Heaven is our home. Would you release whatever it is that burdens you, that weighs you down, and allow this song to minister to you and let your spirit take you to a place where you can only imagine what it would be like to be in the presence of your Savior. Amen. Oh, 
only imagine it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. standing with me as we approach our covenant meal with Christ the Lord's Supper I believe that there is an anointing present to bring healing especially to the brokenhearted today I'm gonna ask if any of the following apply to you, feel free to come and join us down here at the front as a point of contact with the Creator. Because we live in a world full of broken image bearers and broken people. But you know, if you've said, God, I don't know that if I can continue on, I don't know if I can go one more step. God, I don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. If your heart is breaking, because of the pain of the situation that you've faced, facing, walking through right now. Maybe you felt abandoned, deserted, 
overlooked, mistreated. His presence is here for you today. Some of you have a hard time looking at yourself in the mirror and God says, I made you. And we need to take on his nature now. Start acting like the image bearers that he made us to be and reflect his glory to the masses. And then there seems to be a group of people in every crowd. And your life is good and things are going as you expected and God's blessing and favor is upon you. But maybe you need to come down as a point of contact for someone that you know that's struggling with their brokenness. Maybe it's a son or a daughter that's walked away from the king or a brother or sister that just hasn't found their way or figured it out yet. Or that coworker that just seems to not want to come into the presence of God. If any of those apply, feel free to join us down at the front. But I believe that the king is here today and he's going to bring freedom. He's gonna bring healing, especially to the brokenhearted. If you cry out to him, he will heal you this day. He will bring healing to your heart. He will bring encouragement to you in the midst of your discouraging season. He will give you hope where it seems that you have none. Father, today, as we, your people, unite in purpose, I thank you for the bread that represents your body that was broken for us. And at your table, Lord, all of us are equal before you, sinners saved by grace. And you've given us a new nature and a new name and a white robe. So we receive righteousness now. We receive peace now. We receive love now. We receive healing now. We receive freedom now. We receive provision. Lord, you are the way maker. And you deliver us from the hand of the enemy this day. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word says that you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Father, today I thank you that each and every person here would choose, choose, choose fix their thoughts, their hearts, their minds on you. And I thank you so much, Lord, that your promise is perfect peace, no torment in the mind, in our heart, in our soul, but perfect peace, a peace, Lord, that passes all understanding. Lord, I thank you that your anointing is here and present now to bring soundness and clarity of thought and mind to your people. I thank you, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, I speak to those negative mindsets and those strongholds that would bind us up that would be a chain around us, holding us down in a weight. I command them to be broken now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of fear, the spirit of heaviness, the depression, anxiety, that spirit of rejection, any bitterness, Lord God, I, I pray that that hold would be broken over your children. I thank you, Lord Jesus that we would say, Holy Spirit, what is my song of deliverance? What is my song of victory, Lord? I 
thank you, Father God, that the Spirit of God speaks through us and groans through us when we need words to pray and we just don't have them, Lord. But I thank you, Father God, that worship makes a way. Thanksgiving makes a way for personal, emotional connection with you, God. Lord, I thank you that together as a church, we are so thankful and we remember your faithfulness. We remember your goodness. We remember your loving kindness towards us. I thank you that you minister to each and every heart here in a personal way, Lord. That you would help them to know, to give them a vision, to imagine that their home is in heaven with you and that they are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus no matter what the circumstance may be right now. And Lord, some struggles are really, really hard and painful discouraging and the temptation to fall into despair is so easy but I thank you God we choose not to fix our eyes on the things of this world but we choose to fix our eyes on you we choose to think about your goodness we choose to think about all that's lovely and wholesome and worthy of praise and of a good report and I thank you, God, according to your word, a shift comes into our mind and in our spirit that we're able to think with clarity, to make choices not led out of our emotion in the flesh, but choices that are led of the spirit of God. And I thank you that as we receive the cup this morning, that we would remember that all this was made possible because of what your son did on the cross for us, that we are able to enter the throne room into the holy of holies of the Lord God because of the blood of Jesus. Amen.